Hello, I'm here today with Seth Mendel of Teladora. We're talking about a pretty exciting trip he took a number of years ago. And if you are somebody who goes out on the water, you'll appreciate this. If you aren't somebody who goes out on the water, you'll appreciate this. Thanks for joining me, Seth. It's nice to be here. This seems so exciting. I have so many questions about how you went from Fort Lauderdale to Cape Cod, Cod aboard a 36-foot schooner. I know you're going to cover a lot of it in your, in your presentation. In an hour and a half, you're going to squeeze it in. But first, let's talk about why you did this. Well, I, I, uh, there was never a, uh, an opportunity to figure out why I was going to do it. I, I just finished my, uh, what was it, uh, second year of teaching <clears throat> at Avon Old Farm School in Connecticut. So it was June, and uh, early June. And uh, as I say, I was in Connecticut. My brother was up in, in uh, Mattapoisett, Massachusetts, which is right on the water. And he was uh, working in a boat shop. And uh, he called me and said, Seth, uh, there's a man here that's got a 36-foot schooner that's, uh, at this point, it was down in the Bahamas. And he needs it brought up uh, to Massachusetts. Uh, you think uh, we could do that? And I said, well, yes. Uh, well, and you see, I just finished a, a year of teaching in a private school, and of course, structure, 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 right. and suddenly the boys had gone. Uh -huh. I was ready to go anywhere. <laughs> and so, without <laughs> getting into too many details right now, it wasn't only about four or five days later after I'd been up to Mattapoisett and made some deals with a new owner, and uh, we flew from Logan down to Fort Lauderdale and uh, got off the plane in the June heat and uh, got a cab and went to the Bahamar Yacht Basin there, which looked a lot different 60 years ago. It was, act <laughs> it was actually stuck to the mangroves. Uh, and uh, there was the schooner. It was early June. We just come out of Massachusetts, <laughs> and humid, and uh, the boat was a beautiful schooner, uh, built down east, as they say, mm -hmm. seagoing type, short, stubby mast, gaff rigged, uh, but it was filthy, filthy because uh, the um, old owner had had it brought over from the Bahamas, from Nassau to uh, Fort Lauderdale uh, to make the transaction. Evidently, it was better to do it all in the United States. Right. And the crew that brought it over, you know, they could have cared. And so they had left food on board, mm. which had molded. There were cockroaches. The boat was a stinking mess. So before we could do anything, we had to clean it. And that's how you get to know your boat. <laughs> and that's how you get to know your boat. Anyway, we got on, we cleaned it, gave it a Clorox bath, we provisioned it all in the day, sun beating down on us. And uh, we went a a across over into the ocean about six o'clock and took a good swim and cooked up a spaghetti supper dinner and uh, thought we'd get to sleep, sleep and leave. This was on a Thursday, thought we'd leave first thing in the morning Friday. Well, the cabin of that little schooner was about, you know, 110 degrees and humid, plus right on top of the mangroves. We know what the noceums are like here. Yeah. Anyway, the long and the short of it is that uh, we decided we'd just leave. And so, of course, in June, you have light until pretty near 9 o'clock. Sure. So we started the engine and went out, and out into uh, the Atlantic through the breachway and uh, out into the Gulf Stream. And in my talk, I'll uh, talk about the Gulf Stream because I had done a lot of sailing, actually, in the Bahamas. Ah, OK. Before this. Uh, before this, right. And, uh, and we started up. And so uh, <laughs> we literally uh, got out into the Gulf Stream. I figured about 10 miles out into it. You can always tell when you get in the Gulf Stream because it, it's, a, it's a torrent of water that flows anywhere from three to four knots uh, straight north. And so uh, if you're going along, you pretty near feel it when you come off the continental shelf, so to speak, and then that current grabs you and the boat reacts. 
anyway, we got out into the stream and we'd been up all night on the flight down. And mm. so the, I call them the two boys. <laughs> uh, I sent them down below to sleep and I took the first watch. Oh my God. And uh, it was a good sailor. Of course, this schooner was a beautiful sailor. And so off I went in, in, in the twilight, and, uh, and that sun finally went down, and the, and the last glimmer of light went, and I'm there all by myself in the cockpit, oh sailing God. this schooner. I said, I can remember saying, Seth Mendel, what are you doing <laughs> out here? <laughs> well, I can tell just from listening to you, this is almost 60 years ago, and it sounds like you were talking about yesterday. It must have made an incredible impression on you. Well, it, it was, uh, it definitely was, because when I got back, I uh, not only taped it, uh, it as I remembered it, mm -hmm. then I wrote it up because people that heard it said, oh, you ought to send that into Yachting or Rudder sure. Magazine or something mm -hmm. like that. So uh, I wrote it up, but uh, by the time I got all that done, I was involved in the summer and then school started, and so it never went anywhere. Uh -huh. But the reason I can remember it so vividly is that uh, not only did I do those things, write it up and so forth, I've given it two or three times, uh, only about twice to an audience, uh -huh. but I have well, you say told parts of it. Some of the things that you're going to talk to us about, a thunderstorm in the Gulf of Mexico, that, a Gulf Stream, that ought to be pretty exciting, a gale off Cape Hatteras, fog, sharks. Uh, this sounds like a made-for-Hollywood movie. I tell you, the storm off Hatteras, you know, that it, any other boat but uh, a, a gaff rig schooner uh, deep keeled. Uh, right. would have had problems, but uh, we were able, with just the mizzen sail up, which was a sail between the two masts, and uh, the wind favorable to us, uh, so we could run before it. Uh, but the, the, the trouble at night, and this is when the storm was, at night. And that's when you use your stars. And that's when you need some kind of light. Uh. And this was our fifth, our fifth day out, our fifth night out. And we were up by Cape Fear, Cape Lookout, and this Cape Hatteras. And somewhere in that sequence, we were <laughs> out there. And uh, so we just held on. How long was the entire trip? We did the whole trip in, in uh, I think it was 17 days. Don't give any more away. If you are fortunate enough to get into this presentation, you'll hear the rest of the story. And it's quite a story. So it's from 1 to 2.30, Monday, March 18th. Sign up at any concierge desk. Come to hear the rest from Seth Mendel of Teledora.